Hey, this is Stacy Frank with Lionfish University on location in Grand Cayman Island, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Ochoa Varga, Vargas, and he is a physician here on the island, and he's going to tell us about lionfish sting first aid. Dr. Ochoa Vargas? Uh, thank you, Stacy. Well, actually, I brought some lionfish uh, spines for you to see them. I always have them, actually, mostly for children, for them to see that they are not as dangerous as they think. But nevertheless, they are. These are already the, the void of the of the sheet of that is the one that is poisonous, uh, and this one is the habit of already neutralized, so it's not a uh, risk. And as you can see, they are sharp, extremely sharp. They don't penetrate as easy into your finger. But of course, when the fish uh, jerks or when your hand pushes actively to work against them, they can penetrate the skin. Now, when this happens, the usual manifestation that most people have is an extreme pain, okay? It's, not, uh, it's nothing that is uh, as excruciating as some people describe. But of course, people that are sensitive to pain may feel or say differently. And other people have different reactions. Now, for you to prevent the pain and all the reactions, the key, key treatment here is uh, hot water. Now, the hot water you always should bring enough, like in a thermos, is enough for you to, to, to treat most of the pain uh, of the wounds that potentially would be in a diving experience. And what you are going just to do is to pour the hot water that is already uh, really hot, but not boiling, of course, because if not, the thermos couldn't be able to, to close. And if you mind a lot of the temperature range, you can use a thermometer, but quite frankly, the rule of thumb is to use your thumb and see how hot it is. If you can endure it, uh, leave it like that. The hotter the better without the scalding, without pre promoting secondary problems like blistering or a, a second degree or first degree burn. But if you can see your thumb there or the sting, the stung area, you can leave it there. It is a little bit hot, so you can, mediate it. <laughs> you can mediate it a little with seawater or any other water available. And for you to, to leave the the puncture as long as, as required, okay? Do that immediately. Regardless of how the wound is, that will be the key treatment. And, and how long would I uh, That's the thing. Uh, the, the neutralization is going to start immediately as you put in the heat, okay? The longer the better, okay? It's usually recommended 30, 40 minutes, but the longest you can endure it, the better. Also, another thing that many people fail to do is that if, for example, you got the puncture and you didn't get the treatment because they didn't have hot water or because you were far away from the, from the shore or whatever, it doesn't matter to start the treatment as if you just got the wound because it will still neutralize the, the poison, okay? okay? Now, after doing that, you can examine the wound and in case you find uh, some tissue from the sheet, from the uh, venomous spine sheet, uh, inside the wound itself, like imagine it went in a, like in a bridge or went across and you find a little bit of tissue there, it will be important for you to dislodge it. You can use this type of syringe with this inside catheter. Put water here inside. It can be fresh water, not from the hot water tub because it would destroy the embolus of the, of the syringe. But you can use fresh water, even sea water. That sounds very harsh. It would, uh, uh, you would say that's going to contaminate the wound, but the wound is already contaminated, so there is not going to really to, to infer and can improve a little bit, because that tissue that is inside, perhaps, if it's not, don't do anything, mm -hmm. but if you find it there inside, just put a little bit of water here, try to close the tip as close to the puncture that you perhaps would have, and then with strength, you just flush the water out, okay? And that's going to perhaps take a little bit of the tissue that is the sheet that is still very rich in, in toxins. Yeah. Physically flush it out there. There you okay. go. Uh -huh. All right. Yes, the same happens with blisters. I mean, if blisters appear later, it's important for you to puncture. You need to learn how to puncture blisters. We just puncture by the base and squeeze them out. Why? Because the blisters have also the poison, and the poison will continue to act up to the moment that you get rid of it, okay? That usually doesn't happen if you start the treatment very quickly. But in some people that are highly susceptible, blisters appear. So you know how to do that. And that's all. Most of the treatments that are associated, like for example, if you have an allergic reaction or if you happen to get um, complication, infection and so on, or things that in the hospital they would manage better, okay? Some people administer uh, over-the-counter antihistaminics. They put, for example, sometimes gel, uh, penetrate gel or other 
material types uh, but they get the pills of other antihistaminics this could be this one for trying or whatever uh, careful, careful just in case you know how to manage them better wait for you to arrive to the hospital but in case if the allergic allergy reaction is coming in that moment perhaps you need to do it mm. even if you don't know all the pharmacologic consequences of the treatment that would be more or less there. Okay, well, we want to thank Dr. Ochoa Vargas today, and he is our new team doctor on Lionfish University, and we welcome him. And if, if you all have any questions that you'd like to ask him about first aid, uh, about Lionfish things, you're welcome to do that through our Facebook page, Lionfish University. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah. All right.